The ability to clone mammals has been around since the second half of the 90s. In 1996, scientists successfully created a clone of a domestic sheep. The sheep, known as Dolly, represented an incredible breakthrough in the field of genetics. But what did this clone, plus the 10 other types of animal clones that scientists have subsequently created, mean for the future of humanity? What would it be like if, say, you made a clone of yourself. Would you, for example, be able to live an endlessly productive life in which you took turns spending time at home or work? Would there be any downside to this? Well, let's find out, shall we? So the idea of cloning humans has been kicking around in science fiction since 1932 when Aldous Huxley, a writer who seems to feature a lot on this channel, published his dystopian novel Brave New World. In his novel, Huxley introduces us to the concept of Bokhanovsky's process applied to fertilized human eggs in vitro. This process causes them to split into identical genetic copies of the original. Ever since the book's publication, the idea of human cloning has really taken off in the world of sci-fi. In The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy radio series, Douglas Adams, arguably the greatest sci-fi writer of all time grapples with the legal and ethical issues surrounding clone creation. In the story, a cloning machine is tasked with creating a number of copies of an incredibly talented and beautiful girl for a marketing campaign, and it developed a fault. This fault meant that by the time the machine had created one clone, it was halfway through creating the next one, so it was essentially impossible to switch off the machine without committing murder. If hilarious literary genius isn't your thing, we have the Star Wars universe, in which a vast army of clones was created from a single template and put through a rigorous training program of physical and mental preconditioning in order to turn them into the ultimate soldiers. Obviously, both of these examples present problems that have the potential to transfer over to any future real-world applications of cloning. So the first question we must ask ourselves is, is it currently possible to clone a human being? And the answer to that question is, well, yeah. The ability to clone human embryos has been around for some time now, with the process first being carried out in 2001 at advanced cell laboratories. So you might be wondering, well, where are all the clones? To put it simply, there aren't any. Several independent organizations have claimed to have produced a cloned human, with perhaps the most interesting being the religious cult known as the Raelians, who insist that they received alien messages telling them to proceed with human cloning. As yet, nobody has come forward with any verifiable scientific evidence to support their claims. But how useful would a fully grown adult clone of yourself be? anyway. Well, that sort of depends on what you had in mind. If your goal is, as we suggested at the beginning, to create two identical versions of yourself in order to be able to work 24 hours a day and still spend time with your family, a concept which people think I've been up to for some time, well, I'm afraid we're out of luck. Even if you were somehow able to create an identical copy of yourself, essentially all you would have is an empty shell. An exact physical copy of you that would be just that. An exact physical copy. This would not only not possess any of your thoughts or memories, it would be incapable capable of carrying out any actions at all, save for basic biological functions such as breathing and digestion and perhaps not even those. In order to turn this clone into anything approaching a functional member of society, it would be necessary to somehow extract all of the information from your own brain and download it into the brain of your duplicate. We discussed how this is impossible in a previous video, but in case you missed it, here are the salient points. Due to the insanely complex workings of the brain, it is highly unlikely that we'll ever be able to extract complex information from the brain, at least not in the foreseeable future. Secondly, apart from using brainwave manipulation to aid in learning, it is not currently possible to directly upload information to the brain in any way. Unless somebody invented some sort of fancy brain downloading machine like the one in the movie The Sixth Day, you would, at best, simply have a fully grown genetic duplicate of yourself that you would have to raise in the same way as you would raise a baby. In fact, it would even be harder than that. A baby's brain is significantly different to an adult brain, and as demonstrated in such cases as that of Susan Wiley, another topic that we've previously discovered in depth on the channel Into the Shadows, once the brain has reached a certain age, it is incapable of learning certain things such as complex language skills. Taking care of an individual such as this would be a far cry from flipping a coin every morning to see who had to go to work. Even if sometime in the future these problems could be eradicated, would you actually want an exact replica of yourself around the place? Somebody who would eat everything that you liked whenever you were out of the house? Somebody who knew absolutely all of your secrets? Somebody who had exactly the the same emotional attachment to your significant others as you do. That doesn't sound like much fun at all. One possible idea that does currently have some limited scientific plausibility stems from the fact that, albeit under controlled laboratory conditions, it is already possible for one human to directly control the actions of another purely by thinking. 
Again, you can find out far more about this on our video on uploading information directly into the brain. But essentially, the process works by electronically connecting the brains of both individuals and then instructing the sender to imagine the action that they wish the receiver to carry out. If the sender were replaced by a computer, and we assume that this technology continues to advance in the way that researchers believe that it will, the idea of a vast network of centrally controlled clone soldiers is perhaps not quite as unthinkable as we might hope. But how likely is this really? Well, apart from humankind's propensity to do horrendous shit just because we can, would there really be any benefit in this concept that could not simply be achieved by the use of robots? And the answer to that is no, not really. Remote-controlled robotic technology is already fairly well established. If for some reason governments around the world decided that remote-controlled soldiers would actually be of some serious benefit, it would make far more sense to continue developing already tried and tested technology. On top of that, robots have surpassed humans in many important respects. Robots can safely operate within a much wider temperature bracket. Assuming they have the necessary power source, they can perform almost indefinitely without the need for rest and can easily be retrofitted with things like armor, weaponry, and navigational equipment. Simply, in the highly unlikely scenario that armies around the world adopt huge numbers of drone fighters, it would be much simpler for those fighters to be mechanical rather than biological. So, are there actually any benefits to being able to clone humans? Potentially. One branch of cloning that has certainly sparked a great deal of interest is that of cloning for medical reasons. Imagine, if you will, the following scenario. The patient is admitted to hospital with terminal heart failure. The only chance they have of surviving is a heart transplant. There are currently several problems with this option. Firstly, there is not always a donor heart available for anybody who needs it. Secondly, even if the patient is fortunate enough to receive one, he or she will have to take aggressive immune suppressant drugs for the rest of their lives in order to prevent their own body from destroying the new heart. But what if doctors could clone a heart for them? Depending on how quickly this process could be completed, it has the potential to be able to solve both problems. The waiting time would only ever be as long as the cloning process, and more importantly, an exact genetic replica of the patient's own heart would be exceptionally unlikely to come under fire from the body's own immune system. But what if we extend the possibilities of cloning to an even more futuristic degree? Imagine you were involved in some sort of horrific industrial accident or a car crash. The majority of your body is completely destroyed, but your brain is still perfectly functional. It is predicted that within the next decade, it would be possible to transplant a human brain into the skull of another person. Ordinarily, this would present many, many problems for the brain in question. As no brain and body connection is exactly the same, it is doubtful that a transplanted brain would be capable of keeping the host body alive, let alone talking or moving around. However, if the brain could be transplanted into an exact duplicate of its former body, this should no longer be a problem. Leaving aside how unethical it would be to grow an entire human, albeit one with in all likelihood no thoughts or feelings within most people's lifetimes, it should be possible to grow yourself an entire replacement body. So why is the advancement of this technology taking so bloody long? Surely, as the first mammal was cloned in 1996, we should be further along the path by now. And the answer, like the answer to so many issues, lies deep beneath the combined murky waters of legality and ethics. As soon as the creation of Dolly was announced in 1997, governments all over the world either scrambled to make cloning a human illegal or double double check that it already was. This means that although advances have been made in animal cloning throughout the world, there are very few places where it is legal to experiment with human cloning, and from those few places, we have received little to no scientifically verifiable proof that any great strides have been made. Although much of what we have spoken about today is theoretically possible, unless we see a huge government U-turn across the globe, it's unlikely that this technology will progress to a practical stage anytime in the near future.